Robots have long been the object of imagination and invention, but in the world of medicine, they are very much the reality. These revolutionary surgical robots are being increasingly used in a variety of applications. And joining us with more is ABC News medical contributor and cardiothoracic surgeon at the Morristown Memorial Hospital, Dr. Chris McGovern. Dr. McGovern, great to see you. Thanks for great being here. Great to be here, Tanya. So this is fascinating stuff. It's a little bit of a blend of science fiction and medical reality, but robots are performing operations. Can you believe it? It's, it's something else. Yeah. This has been uh, something that the medical community has been working on for a while though, right? <coughs> it is. The idea of how robots really help out in operations started out in the military and really reduced to its simplest level. Robotic surgery is abandoning the idea of having to open up a patient to perform surgery. We put tiny cameras in the patient with tiny instruments through small incisions and remotely perform the operation. But still, a surgeon is in control, as, Ab we're, as we're going to see in a little bit, because you have, you've brought some amazing uh, equipment yeah. here with you, correct? Surgeons always in control. Always. This is not like HAL in 2001 right. Space Odyssey. They don't control things. They don't think. They don't do anything other than when we tell them to do it. Absolutely. Now tell us about the advantages and the disadvantages of this kind of surgical surgery. Sure. The, the, the main advantage is that it's minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. Everyone's so excited about having smaller incisions nowadays. Mm -hmm. And this is the ultimate way of performing a minimally invasive operation because the incisions are smaller. There's less scarring, there's less pain, there's less bleeding, you're up on your feet sooner, you're home sooner, you're back to work sooner. Another advantage is that we can see things better. We use a camera that magnifies things 10 to 15 times. The camera has two lenses, so you have a left eye and a right eye, so you can see three-dimensionally. And the other advantage, Tanya, is that from an ergonomic standpoint, it, it gives you more dexterity. This is the standard instrument that we use for heart surgery. Right. And it, this holds a needle, and this is the business end of the instrument, and you have some motion here, but not a lot of play. This is what they've come up with for robotic surgery. So this, this is, is that arm right there. Exactly. Okay. This is one of the arms that we're going to put in okay. the robot to use. And just look at the tip of this instrument and you can see how much more flexibility this Incredible. has. Incredible. And you can get into places that you normally could not get with this. So for you as a surgeon, how many of your surgeries nowadays is with a robot? Not many. Not many. For heart surgery, not many. Not right many. now in the heart surgery community, less than one or about one percent of the operations are done that way. But in other fields, mm -hmm. in urology, in general surgery, it's much more common. Everyone's trying to get on the bandwagon, yes. Tanya, because it's a very exciting way to do it. In 2001, 1,000 of these operations were performed in the United States. Just last year, there were 200,000 operations. So people An are very getting excited. But what are the disadvantages? Great point. It's a big, cumbersome machine. It takes a little bit of getting used to. There's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Just because you're good on video games doesn't mean you're <laughs> going to be good on the robot. When you're learning, it's slower because you have to get up to speed, so the operation takes a little bit longer. And another disadvantage is that it's very expensive. But on the flip side of that is that if you can get an operation done faster and mm -hmm. with less invasion, you can get a patient home sooner How much and you can save them money. do one of these machines cost? Each machine costs a million dollars. Wow, yeah, that's going to be tough but, but, for most hospitals. But, it, but again, if you've got someone who's normally in the hospital for seven or ten days and you can get them out of the hospital in three days, you save that money and it'll pay for itself. Good point, good point. Now, this is the exciting part. You're going to yep. show us how one of these machines works. So th this is the device. This is, this is the Da Vinci surgical device. It's appropriately named after the man who 500 years ago invented the robot, Leonardo da Vinci. This is, uh, there are other robots in hospitals, but this is the only device that is approved for surgery. And uh, it's really got two parts. This part over here is the patient console. Mm -hmm. This part over here is the surgeon's console. This is in the operating room. This is what is connected to the patient. When the patient comes into the operating room, they're anesthetized. We make three tiny incisions. If we're performing heart surgery, we'll put the central port right here, which is the camera, into one of the incisions, and we'll put the two other instruments into the other incisions. And they can be whatever we want. If we need a pair of scissors, if mm -hmm. we need something to pick stuff up. You and can change these arms, and they're You can change them in the middle of the operation. And you say the, the surgeon does not have to even be in the same room. That's exactly right. So this, these instruments are connected to the console, mm -hmm. which then remotely connects to this device over here, which is the control center where the surgeon sits. And you don't have to be here. You could be in the next room. You could be upstairs. You could be in Kansas or in France. Surgeons have operated on patients that have been on the other side of Atl the Atlantic while they've been That's operating here in the States. So anything is possible. But I'm just going to get on here and yes, show you Yes, will you bit show us? You. Absolutely. I'm going to stay over here and watch your work. <coughs> now, what was the training like? How long does it take for a it's, surgeon? It's pretty exp it's extensive, and most of us don't have much experience with a robot mm -hmm. bef uh, yeah. before any of this. So uh, you do have to spend some time getting up to speed. 
so your and fingers go into those little velcro That's circles. exactly right, Tanya. Okay. We've got pedals on the floor that, mm -hmm. that I can control, and I have uh, two joysticks that I'm using to control the instruments. And as you see, when I move my left hand mm -hmm. like this, the left instrument moves, and when I move my right hand, the right instrument moves. And I can give you an idea of what we can do. Well, I can tell you you're doing a great job over here. Well, yeah, no one's <laughs> bleeding yet, right? No bleeding. Perfect. So, so it's incredible the kind of things you can do. And just to give you an idea about what the magnification is like in these, I looked at this penny earlier today. The producer was showing me that yeah. the, uh, asked me if I could see the inside of the Lincoln Memorial here. And if you look carefully, you can actually see Abe Lincoln sitting in there. <laughs> Incredible. You, you can't see that with the naked eye. So, so the ability to, to, to use the robot and visualize these things is absolutely incredible. So this machine just enhances the ability of a human surgeon. It does. And, and what it really does, Tiny, is it gives you the opportunity to do the same operation through tiny incisions. Mm -hmm. And for some operations, you can really do a better job because you can see things better. So would you love to do all your operations? I would love to. It. It's, it's the most comforting feeling in the middle of the operation to be sitting here. It's quiet. Right. You're, you're going about your business. We'd love to do all of our operations. Now, if way. something does go wrong, mm -hmm. what are there nurses standing by? How does it work? Absolutely. And we're in the operating room. We right. have our setup configured so that I'm over in the corner in an operating room. I can get up, I can run right over, and we can open things up. Fascinating. If we have to. What is the future? Where is all of this going? Well, I think we're going to continue to push the envelope. I think anyone that's not doing it is going to get into it. And I think the people that do do it, like the urologists and the heart surgeons, are just going to do more and more. It's very exciting. Right. And there is a place where the public can get their hands in one of these and do it themselves, isn't there? That's exactly right, Tanya. As a matter of fact, this weekend, this device is going to be across the Hudson at the Liberty Science Center in Jersey City. And it's going to be on display for you and your kids and anyone to come and try. So it demystifies the, the whole idea of robotic surgery. Fantastic. Just stand in line. You get to do it yourself for a little bit. You do. Bit. All That's right. right. Dr. McGovern, thank you so much. This was really fascinating stuff.